Um, implicit differentiation. This is a way to find derivatives when you cannot solve for y in your equations. And these are a couple of equations where you would use implicit differentiation because you cannot easily solve for y. The algebra behind solving for y here would be tougher than the calculus in getting the derivative. So we're going to use a technique called implicit differentiation, which is really your chain rule on steroids. Uh, and just to give you an idea of, of the brains behind the implicit differentiation, we're going to do the derivative of this top equation, except we're going to do it with the chain rule instead of doing it with your normal power rule. So um, the derivative of y is dy dx. That's really what that means. The derivative of y with respect to x is... And when I do the derivative of 4x cubed, I'm going to do this like a chain rule, the same way I would do the derivative of 4 times x squared plus 1 cubed. If I were doing that derivative, I would bring down the 3, and 3 times 4 is 12. We would leave the inside alone, so I'm going to leave the x alone. And then I'll subtract 1 from the old power, the same way I would do the derivative of this, except now we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. And I'm going to write the derivative of x in a weird way. Rather than just write 1, which the derivative of x is 1, I'm going to write it as the derivative of x with respect to x, dx, dx, which is the derivative of x. Same reason the derivative of y was dy, dx. It's the derivative of y with respect to x. Now I'm going to continue through this polynomial using the chain rule. Bring down the 2, 2 times 7 is 14. I'll leave the x alone, subtract 1, and make it to the first power. And then the derivative of x is dx dx. Uh, and then the derivative of 9, or the derivative of 9x is 9. And the x would go away, but then I would multiply by the derivative of x. Actually, let's do this. It'd be x to the 0. I bring down the 1, and we subtract 1. And then the derivative of x, the derivative of my inside, would be dx dx. And when I clean this up, and I know this looks really weird. You're probably wondering why the heck I'm doing this. It, hopefully, I'll be able to come full circle here in a second, and you'll understand. But this would clean up to simply 12x squared, and dx dx reduces to 1. The whole thing just cancels. Plus 14x to the first, dx dx is 1. Minus 9x to the 0 is 1, and dx dx is 1, so none of that's needed. And that would be your derivative. And that's basically your power rule, but I just kind of went crazy with the chain rule. I'm going to do the same thing with number 2 here, or with the second one. I have x squared, so I'll bring down the 2, leave the x alone, and subtract 1, and then multiply by dx dx, right, because that's the derivative of the inside. But from now on, whenever we have dx dx, we're just not going to write it. We'll think about it, but we're going to realize that dx dx just goes into a one, turns into 1 anyway. Well, let's see, the derivative of y, well, the derivative of y is just 1, but then we multiply by the derivative of the y, which would be dy dx, and that's important because dy dx is not 1. We have to actually write that. The derivative of 8 is 0, and then I can actually solve for dy dx. dy dx equals, I would move my 2x over, make it negative 2x, and divide by the 1, and that would be your derivative. So that was essentially a weird application of implicit differentiation. Wasn't needed, because on both of these I could have solved for y, but I'm going to show you what happens when we have equations that actually need to be solved for y. Uh, so here is one right here, or where we actually need to use implicit. Now, if we look at this, you cannot solve for y easily. Now, you may be thinking, I can solve for y. y squared equals 9 minus x squared, and then we'll take the square root. Right? 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 Wrong! Because if you take the square root to solve an equation, you actually have to do plus or minus. And you created two equations, and you would have to do the derivative of each of them. So we're not going to use normal derivative rules for this one, I'm going to use implicit. I'm going to do the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, um, and the derivative of x is dx dx. We don't need to write that, so we just have 2x, plus the derivative of y squared is 2y, but then I have to multiply by the derivative of y, which is dy dx, and that's not 1, so we're going to keep that. Um, and then the derivative of 9, we have to do the derivative of both sides. The derivative of 9 is 0. Then we'll solve the equation. Move the 2x over, so 2y dy dx is equal to negative 2x, and then we'll divide by 2y. So dy dx, my derivative, is negative 2x over 2y. Or if you are crazy smart, you may realize that that's just negative x over y. So there is the derivative. Here's the derivative. Okay, yeah? Anytime you do the derivative of a y term, you have to multiply by dy dx. 
And I could have multiplied by dx dx when I did the derivative of the x term, but dx dx is just 1, so it's really not needed. So let me undo that. Okay. Ah, oh, geez. No, 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 no. There we go. All right. Uh, so let's try another one. Let's try this one. Um, x cubed plus y minus y squared. Uh, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared plus the derivative of y is 1, but then you have to multiply by dy dx because I did the derivative of y. Anytime you do the derivative of y, you have to multiply by dy dx. Uh, then I'll go to y squared, so minus the derivative of y squared is 2y, but I did the derivative of y, so I'm going to multiply by dy dx. Every time you do the derivative of y, you have to multiply by that, and the derivative of 8 is 0. And now I need to solve this for dy dx. And here's what we're going to do here. I'm going to go ahead and move that 3x squared over. That will give me dy dx. Hey, the bell's ringing. I think that means AO is about to start. So I guess I'll just have to pause this for a minute and wait for AO to end. I don't know. Maybe I can finish this problem before somebody walks in. Move that 3x squared over. And then if we look at the left side, what I'm actually going to do here is factor out the dy dx. There's dy dx there. I'm going to factor it out. That'll leave me with 1 minus 2y equals negative 3x squared. And then dy dx will simply divide by 1 minus 2y. And your derivative is negative 3x squared divided by 1 minus 2y. And that's your derivative. And it's okay to have y's in the derivative. That's going to happen sometimes. So there we are. Implicit differentiation gives us the derivative of that crazy thing, which I didn't want to have to try to solve for y. Okay, next example here. Um, all right, here's another one. We're not going to be able to solve this for y, so we'll just start going, doing the derivative from left to right. Derivative of x squared is 2x plus... Now, you have to be careful here, because here I have x times y, and times is a very important word here because that means we'll have to use the product rule here. So I'll do uh, the derivative of x times y. <laughs> you did! Alright, a little interruption there. Somebody had to come pick up an iPad. Alright, uh, so we'll do the product rule here. And the derivative of x is 1 times y plus, and then I'll do the derivative of x times the derivative, I'm sorry, the derivative of x is 1 times y plus x Stupid noises. There we go. X times the derivative of y, and the derivative of y is dy dx. So there I did the product rule. Derivative of x, y plus x, derivative of y, plus derivative of y squared is going to be 2y. Have to multiply by dy dx. Equals, and the derivative of 12 is 0. And now we have some cleaning up to do here. Uh, Let's see, this is 2x plus y plus x dy dx. And now it turns into an algebra problem. So I clean it up. We're going to move those two over. And at the same time I move 2x and y over, I will factor a dy dx out of those two terms. All right, so there I just did that real quick. I paused it and came back. Um, so I factored out my dy dx, I moved the other two over, and then finally, last step, we will divide by x plus 2y, which gives me negative 2x minus y over x plus 2y. And there's our derivative. All right, we'll see. So we, I think I had three. How many did I have? There's four, five, six, yeah, three more. All right, uh, trig derivatives. Same thing going from left to right. The derivative of sine x, or I'm sorry, it's not sine x, sine y. The derivative of sine is cosine, but remember you never change the angle, so I'll leave the y alone. Then we'll multiply by derivative of the inside, which will be dy dx. Plus the derivative of cosine is negative sine x. And the derivative of the inside is 1, so we'll just leave that alone. Equals derivative of x is 1. Uh, and now we're ready to solve for dy dx. Got cosine y, dy dx. Move that sine x over. And then we'll divide.
All right. Um, yeah, the main thing people mess up with on trig is they want to do the derivative of the angle on the first go. Remember, you have to hold it still or leave the angle alone. Then you'll multiply by the derivative of the angle once you tackle the, the sine derivative. Uh, let's see. Here's a, another kind of funny chain rule problem. Uh, we have a bunch of stuff squared, so we'll bring down the 2. Leave the inside alone, 2x plus y, to the first. Then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So my inside here, the derivative of 2x is 2, plus the derivative of y is dy dx. So there's the derivative of my inside is equal to 0. Um, and what we'll do with this one to clean up, this is a little trick here. We're going to treat all of this stuff like one big item. And I'm actually going to distribute that through. I'm going to do it times 2. And then I'll do this times dy dx. Uh, so let's do that. 2 times all that stuff would actually be 4 times 2x plus y. Plus, and then 2 times 2x plus y times dy dx is going to be 2, 2x plus y, dy dx. And now I can get the dy dx. I'm going to move this stuff over to the other side of the equation first. So that'll leave me 2, 2x plus y, dy. And if I move all that over, it becomes negative. And then we will divide. Negative 4, 2x plus y, over 2. 2x plus y. Ooh, that cleans up. Holy cow. Did I mess up? Hang on, I have to pause this for a second. Because that cleans up very sexy-like. That scares me. All right, double-checked that and looked over everything twice, and that actually is correct. And this thing cleans up crazy-like. Normally, I don't simplify, but this is so nice. Um, the 2x, is, 2x plus y's cancel. Negative 4 over negative 2 is simply negative 2. And that is what the derivative of this function is. That's very interesting. That kind of scares me a bit, but I double-checked my work, and I did it on the calculator, and that is indeed what the derivative is. So uh, we'll just accept it. All right, uh, last one, y equals tangent xy. Uh, so let's see, starting on the left side, the derivative of y will be dy dx. And then the derivative of tangent of anything, derivative of tangent is secant squared. Leave the angle alone, and now I have to multiply by the derivative of the angle, which is going to be a product rule, so make sure you catch that product. Derivative of x is 1 times y plus x times derivative y. Uh, and then I need to try to solve this for dy dx. First thing I'm going to have to do is take this secant squared xy, and I'm going to have to distribute through all of this. And you really have to just be really careful with your algebra on these problems. So dy dx is equal to, um, I'm going to say y times secant squared xy plus x dy dx times secant squared xy. Uh, and if I'm going to try to solve for dy dx, I have to get my dy dx terms on the same side of the equation. So I'm now going to take this one right here, that big honking term, and I'm going to move it to the other side of the equation to hook up with that other dy dx term. So dy dx minus x dy dx secant squared. I'm going to pause it and come back after I'm through right there. Save a few seconds. Um, and so I move that term over. Now I have all that. Then last thing I'm going to factor out the dy dx from the left side of the equation. So let me factor that out. So I've factored out my dy dx right here. And then finally we will divide by the remaining term. And that will be our final answer. dy dx will be this side over that big honking set of parentheses. And there we go. And I believe that is all the problems I wanted to do. It is. And that's implicit differentiation. And... That's it. So I'll see you in class.